So this play, um, The Thousand Cranes, was written by a Canadian aspiring playwright back in the early 80s. It was first produced in 1983 in California, and we did it at the Theater Project a couple of years later. 35 years ago, 35 years ago, I remember touring with young people in the Young People's Theater van. We'd take plays to Arista County and to Washington County and all over Maine. And I remember those people who are now in their 40s and 50s talking about the bomb and talking about learning in school to roll under a desk. And now here we are, 35 years later, <clears throat> and we're still dealing with it. So we got to do something. So it's a pleasure to be here at the Peace Fair and to read with Layla, who is my granddaughter and who spent a couple of weeks volunteering last summer in a refugee camp in Palestine. Uh, um, so this is the story of Sadako. It's fictionalized, but the basic story is true. Because there are only two of us will be reading, Layla will be reading Sadako, I'll be reading her mother and her friend, both of whom are female. Um, we've cut the script because if we read the whole thing, it would take too long, but I think you won't have trouble following it. Thanks a lot for inviting us, Peace Bear. So it starts with Sadako. My name is Suzuki Sadako. I'm 11 years old. I live in Hiroshima, Japan, with my father, my brothers, and sister, and my mother. The year is 1954, nine years after the bomb. Mama, mama! Sadako-chan, Sadako-chan, what are you doing? Catch me, Mama-chan, you can't catch me. Sadako-chan, can't you, can't you keep still? Hold still. I'm sorry, Mama. How much longer? I have to go out for a run before it gets too dark. A run? Honestly, Sadako-chan, do you think all this running is proper for a girl? Can't you try to be more like other girls? Take Yoshiko-chan, for example. So quiet. Oh, I try, Mama. I really do. I try and I try, but I can't. Maybe I'm not a real girl at all. Maybe, maybe some spirit has taken over my body. Maybe I'm a wild animal. Oh, Sadako. Maybe I'm a horse. Hold still. Or a gazelle. Dong, dong. Sadako. Or a cheetah. Arg. That's enough. I'm sorry, Mama. It's just that I'm so excited. Our teacher, Mr. Nomura, just told me that I've been chosen to be on the relay team next field day. Good for you. With your energy, you'll burn up the track. So, can I go outside now to practice? Don't you want a new kimono? It will be beautiful, Sadako-chan. You will look like a kokushi doll. But I don't want to look like a doll. Well, don't you want people to find you attractive? Do you mean boys? I don't care what boys think. I can run faster than most of them anyway. Well, I'm sure you'll change your mind in a year or two. That's it. Maybe in a year or two. Maybe in a year or two I'll change my mind about boys. Maybe. Maybe in a year or two I should think about making you a new kimono. All right. Outside with you, my little animal. Sarko-chan, walk. I practiced and practiced for the big race every day, even when it rained. When the day of the race finally arrived, I saw my family jostling their way to the front of the crowd, 
my best friend, Yoshiko, was with them. The starting official raised his pistol. In Don, the race was on. I was the fifth person to run in a five-person relay, but I couldn't stand still. Come on, hurry up. Sadako's team is behind. I was ready to run, but I looked. We hadn't even made it to the first pass off yet. Mama's here today. I wonder what she'll think about all this. It's not very ladylike. Then, all of a sudden, it was my turn. I'd never seen her race before. It's certainly not very ladylike. <laughs> no, but it is beautiful. Fly, my Sadako-chan, fly. Run, Sadako, run! Run, Sadako! They're coming up to the finish line. It's Kyoko? No. Sadako? Kyoko? No. Sadako? It's... It's... Sasaki Sadako, the bamboo team! I could hear everyone cheering, but I felt a bit dizzy. In a few minutes, the dizziness went away. My parents were very proud. But after field day, the dizziness came back and came back again. I loved my parents, but I didn't tell them. Too many people get sick in Hiroshima. The only person I ever told was my best friend, Yoshiko. Yoshiko-chan, Yoshiko-chan, come out to play. Hi, Sadako-chan. Looking for something? Let's skip. Skip? Yeah, skip. You know, with a rope? I don't know, Sadako-chan. I just finished my lunch. <laughs> lunch? You're always eating, Yoshiko-chan. You're sweating. Are you all right? I'm fine. Sadako-chan, do you still get dizzy after you run? Never. Well, sometimes. Hardly ever, really. It's been four months since field day, and I hardly ever get dizzy when I run anymore. I think you should tell your parents. No, I don't want you to scare them. They get so nervous about everything. They skip rope, and then suddenly Sadako stops skipping and stands with her hands on her knees, her feet placed wide apart. What's the matter, Sadako-chan? Nothing. Sadako-chan? It's, it's nothing. She collapses. Sadako-chan. Are you teasing me? N no. Mrs. Sasaki! Mrs. Sasaki! When we went to the hospital, it was very quiet. The doctors took some blood. They tapped my chest. They x-rayed me. I held my breath. Then the doctors went into another room with my mother. I could hear them talking, but they sounded far away. Then my mother said, Leukemia? I felt like I was going to scream. The quiet in the hospital turned into a roar, and the roar wanted to come out of me. When my mother came back, I wanted to say, I can't have leukemia, I can't. But she looked so worried, so I pretended that I hadn't heard. It's just an infection, Sadako-chan. But the doctors want to do a few tests. You'll have to stay for a few weeks. Weeks? But will you be all right at home? With the housework and everything? Of course I will. Can I get you anything? You better go home now. It's almost time for you to go make supper. Papa will be waiting. Go ahead. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I told her to go, but my arms still wanted to hold on to her. In the next few days, the doctors did their tests. When no one was looking, I read the results. Sadako-chan, Sadako-chan, are you awake? 
It's me, Yoshiko. Hi. They don't usually allow kids in to visit on Thursdays, so I lied at the desk. I told them I was 21. <laughs> How are you feeling? Fine. They're just doing a few tests. I know. Mr. Nomura says you'll be back at school again in no time. You know what we did on Sunday? We all went to Mr. Nomura's house again, clam digging, and he boiled sweet potatoes for us to eat. You should have seen Tomiko. She ate four. I was disgusted. How many did you eat? Five. <laughs> Small ones. Yoshiko-chan, you're my best friend, right? Well, you've got to tell me the truth. They did the test already, and I read the results. Sadako. I know, I know I wasn't supposed to, but no one would tell me anything. But there must have been some mistake. The tests say I have leukemia from the bo bomb. That can't be true. Sadako-chan, I, I can't. It's all right. You don't have to say anything, Yoshiko-chan. I know I'll be all right. I don't feel like I'm going to die. Oh, Sadako-chan, of course you're not. Mr. Nomura says people don't always die from leukemia. Oh. So it is true. Oh, Sadako. Sadako-chan, Mr. Nomura says, Mr. Nomura says if anybody can get better from leukemia, you can. Is that true? Did Mr. Nomura really say that? Of course it's true. Didn't they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. Well, he's our teacher. He ought to know. Right? Right, Sadako-chan? Sadako-chan, what you need is hope. Yoshiko unwraps the furoshiki and reveals a large origami crane. Slowly. What's this? A papered crane. He's going to help you get better. Don't you know the legend of the paper crane? I can't remember. Well, cranes are supposed to live for a thousand years, right? Yes. Well, the legend says that even if you're very sick, if you find 1,000 paper cranes, the gods will make you better. They'll give you a long life, just like a crane. Oh, Yosuko-chan, let me see it. It was like holding a living bird in my hands. I could almost feel warm feathers and heartbeat, and I could feel my own heartbeat right down to my toes. Thank you, Yoshiko-chan. The cranes gave me hope. Each new bird was like a new life. My room was filling up with cranes, every size and color. Even when I felt sick, if I could move my hands, I folded cranes. Don't give up, don't give up, 940, 950, 960, 965, 970, 980, 990, 995, 996, 997, 998, 999, 1,000 cranes. Sadako collapses, and then she pulls herself back up and folds more cranes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 
I kept folding cranes. And then I started to feel better. The doctor said I could go home. I enjoyed being home. I went for a walk with my family and I felt like an ordinary girl. It was a beautiful time, but I wasn't surprised when I got sick again. When I went back into the hospital, my mother brought me a present. A new kimono, cherry blossoms, but... I stayed up all night to sew it. But I might never get to wear it. Please, Sadako. Help me put it on. You look beautiful, like a kokushi doll. Yes, just like a kokushi doll. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Mama Chan, will you sing me the song about the cranes? Yes, you have so many now, more than a thousand. Soon you'll get better. Yes. Heavenly cranes fly away. Each year you must leave. When the season comes again, you'll fly back to me. When I died, I was holding Yoshiko's crane. My mother's arms were around me. I knew I'd never be alone. After Sadako died, her friends raised $20,000 to build a special children's statue for peace. The statue's like a mountain, with a girl who looks like Sadako standing on top. She's holding a golden crane in her hands. Now, kids from all over the world send thousands and thousands of cranes to the statue. They use the statue to, stay, to say, this is our cry, this is our prayer, peace in the world.